While fans listen and dance to rap music from their favorite rappers, some of the lyrics in these songs have some true stories behind them. From stories about their real-life beef to stories about their dead ops, many rappers tend to share real details in their music. Keep watching till the end of this video to see rap lyrics that really happened. Trust me, you don't want to miss this. NBA Youngboy, Poor One Rapper NBA Youngboy may have an aggressive rap style, but in all of that, he talks about things that have happened in his life. On the track, Poor One, he rapped about the betrayal he suffered at the hands of one of his friends, the late G Money and his sister. Remember smoking weed with you, little brother? Matter act, I used to call you my big brother. Then you did some foul shit and had f with my sister, then threw it in my face in front of the people on Insta. I ain't gonna speak on that disease that y'all gave to each other. In this track, NBA Youngboy was referring to the late Baton Rouge rapper G Money, who he looked up to as an older brother. They basically grew up together as Youngboy moved in with his friend, Lil Hark, who was G Money's younger brother. The two became friends, and G Money got him signed into the TBG, aka Top Boy Gorilla, crew, where NBA Youngboy kicked off his rap career. Unfortunately, although they were good friends, it didn't take a while before NBA Youngboy and G Money fell apart. G Money, who was also signed to TBG, had a more successful career and NBA Youngboy only moved in his shadow. He grew sick of being in TBG and having his career shortened by G Money's fame, so he quit to join the BBG, aka Bottom Boy Gorilla Crew. In late 2016, NBA Youngboy released Project 38 Baby under BBG. His project performed incredibly well and followed it with Mind of a Menace 3, which also performed well. However, NBA Youngboy's early tracks under BBG were mostly diss tracks to his former friends at TBG, including G Money. By 2016, the two fell out, and G Money went on to diss NBA Youngboy several times. However, the situation between them only worsened when G Money had an affair with the sister of NBA Youngboy. In an interview, G Money went as far as talking about the affair. He met, he met by the sister too though. Yeah, I had f***ed her a long time ago. And this situation prompted NBA Youngboy to release the diss track where he dissed G Money. Julio Fulio, Beatbox. Many rappers tend to rap about their ops and people they've had real-life problems with, and Julio Fulio is one of them. Julio remixed the track Beatbox, where he rapped about an op that was kidnapped only for his bones to be found a year later. Corbin got kidnapped, they found his bones, he was rotten, where's Corbin? Fulio rapped about T. Corbin Johnson, aka Spaz Corbin who was associated with 12 Humid slash S4C Jump Out Gang from East Jacksonville. On the day he was last seen, Corbin went for a job interview with UPS. Afterward, he was dropped at his mother's north side home. He went out around 9.30 p.m. and wasn't seen again after that. His parents tried to reach out to him the following day, but Corbin didn't reply. A man found a bag of human remains while clearing a field a year later. Word on the street is that a rival gang kidnapped Corbin. He was said to have been set up by a girl. They held him as ransom over a drug debt, and when his crew didn't come through, he was killed and his body was disposed in the woods. After almost a year, there wasn't any evidence to use. He mainly was just a bag of bones at that point. Fulio uses they in his rap, which sounds like he wasn't involved in the incident as cops got involved, and they used the rap lyrics to get information surrounding Corbin's kidnapping. So although Fulio rapped about it, he wasn't taking credit for being involved in it. He only shared this story with the rest of the world through his rap. Corbin wasn't the only person Fulio mentioned in his freestyle. In the song he said, and lil man named Jamar, that's a real rat. The backstory of this line is particularly disturbing. Jamar was a named witness who put two of Fulio's friends, Cracker Jack and JB, in jail. The case involved the murder of 22-month-old Aiden McClendon, who was accidentally shot and killed during a drive-by intended for his uncle in a gang dispute. Jamar witnessed the entire thing go down and was able to take pictures of the shooters, which were eventually used to put them behind bars. When toddlers begin to catch bullets, it's an indication that things in the South have really gone South. 
When Fulio was asked on the Bootleg Kev podcast, what is the line that can't be crossed? He said, I ain't gonna cap. There ain't no lines. No one gives a f in my city. For drill rappers in Jacksonville, this means one of two things. Either you get smoked or you get locked up for smoking someone. Lil Durk, don't die. The most popular place in Chicago's rap scene today is O'Block, but not many fans know the story of how O'Block came about. Lil Durk, a rapper associated with O'Block, decided to hint at how the name came about. He rapped on the track, Don't Die. Catch a op, now the block is named after you. The formal name of O'Block is Parkway Gardens, located on the 6400 block of South King Drive. However, today it goes by many names. Wick City, Toontown, Keta World, Sheroid Squad, Whitey Gang, Munna Gang, Stretch Gang, and City of Heck. All of these names were coined from fallen disciples who lived on O'Block. The current name was, however, gotten after O.D. Perry, a member of O'Block, was shot and killed by his ops from 63rd. The gang wars between O'Block and 63rd Street had existed since the 90s through the Black Disciples and Gangster Disciples gang. However, at the time, the gang wars weren't as bloody as they have been in the last decade. The gang wars in the area got bloody after Wooski, who also lived on the 63rd block, decided to join the Gangster Disciples set, which O'Block members were a part of. He was, however, forced to join the Black Disciples, but refused, and this caused him to have beef with his members. The beef got heated up in 2010 to the extent that Wooski killed a Black Disciple, Reezy, on O'Block, where he lives. He had to move out as the Black Disciples were looking to gun him down. After Wooski killed Reezy, a huge war started between the two sets. The Black Disciples did all they could to get their hands on Wooski, and when they couldn't, they took it out on other Gangster Disciples members. Trey Five, an O-Block and Black Disciple member who is currently in prison, shot and killed Marcus, a member of the Gangster Disciples. Since then, many murders and retaliations have happened between the blocks. It was during these retaliations that O.D. Perry was killed. On January 12, 2011, a member of the Gangster Disciples, Tuka, was killed, and the Gangster Disciples believed that O.D. Perry did it. On August 11, 2011, Gakira Barnes, aka K.I., shot O.D. three times. All these killings by ops prompted Lil Durk to rap about naming blocks after dead ops. Do you think these stories are real? What other rap lyrics do you think really happened? Join the conversation and let us know in the comments section below. That's the end of today's video guys. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe for more content. Also, don't forget to smash that like button and leave a comment down below. Thanks.